Well, welcome everybody to episode 100 of Connect, Inspire, Create. This is certainly a milestone and a celebration as my guest today is my good friend, Trish Kinney. Trish has actually been part of creating this podcast and helped me take it from a coffee chat on Facebook with our mutual friend, Katalin Galbovi, to the three of us actually co-hosting Connect, Inspire, Create for over a year. So I recommend go back and listen. There's a whole nother 99 episodes for you to listen to. <laughs> but today we are focusing on the journey of being an accountability coach and where accountability can support you on this journey. So just a little bit about Trish from behind the scenes. Trish worked as a digital sales trainer and a group coach for over 16 years and then earned her professional coaching certificate in 2016 and stepped into launching Healthy Life Mindset. A well-balanced life of moderation is the emphasis of her study and her practice. She currently leads coaching sessions that follow Carol Dweck's growth mindset value system. And her two favorite and most positive trigger tools are the 360 circle and the time blocking method. And if we have time, we'll dig into those as well. But Trish shares that her personal belief and a path that works well for her clients is to align our daily actions with our core values, so important, and adjust as necessary throughout our lives. She says, because change and fear and doubt are all a normal part of our lives. She loves to help people navigate those unique life struggles with hope, with courage, with intention, and with confidence. So welcome, Trish. I am thrilled to have you join me on this milestone episode. Yes. Hi. Thank you, Carol. You know me. It was tough to just keep my mouth shut for a minute. Thank you so much for that. I. I really was listening carefully and I, I can't, I, I, I couldn't have expressed better what I think I'm trying to do as an accountability coach. So thank you for that. Absolutely. Well, I am, I'm looking forward to digging into some of these, but before we get there, I've just got some random questions to throw at you, but just to give people a little bit of a sure. view behind Trish. So first one, what's something that people would be really surprised to know about you? Well, I'll share a little more about it later, but it surprised me this year is I spent Christmas Day in complete solitude and it was wonderful. It surprised me and it would surprise anyone who knows me as the extrovert that I am. Sometimes we need that solitude. Amen. Here's another fun one. What was the last thing you Googled? That I'm going to have to think about. Oh, Montana weather. I googled Montana weather this morning. We're having, like everyone else, just off the hook ups and downs. Oh, so it hasn't, let, it hasn't let up yet? I mean, it's raining. It's pouring today. We were about to go snowshoeing with all the snow and it started pouring. And now it's literally like those who remember 7 Eleven slushies, that's what our snow is. Oh, like. <laughs> that's no fun. I'm mm. not going to rub it in, but I'm looking at beautiful New Mexico skies, and we're supposed to have 50 something degrees today. Good. So that is crazy. That, Yay. Uh, and now, uh, last one I wanted to ask you, and I know that you have some processes that you love to do with you start your day and how you divide up your day. But when are you the most productive? And what do you feel supports that? This is so fun. I know right before you hit record, we were talking about me being on the other side. It's like we're role playing. I love it. I have to kind of put myself, I'm actually a little nervous too. It's funny. Um, let's see my morning routine or, or say that one more time, please. So thinking of when you're the most productive and, you know, I, I'd like that to ask people that question because I think it gives other listeners that space to go, Number one, we don't have to be productive all the time, right. but to be productive, there's some steps that we do need to take and recognize in ourselves. Yes. So what helps you be productive and what is your most productive? I remember you being a night owl, but I'll exactly. you That's answer still that the case. That's still the case. I'm definitely a night owl. I fight it because I do have clients in the morning. I've been fighting it lately and I have clients. One is in a different country 
we align okay with that. And then another is East Coast. And of course, I'm kind of mountain West Coast. So I do have to get up extra early to be more alert. Um, but for the most part, my best brain space is from about three o'clock in the afternoon until about 11 o'clock at night. And I know many people are not conditioned to that at all, but I actually, I do have a couple of clients who are musicians and artists and they are very similar. They will choose to wake up, which I do not. They will, they will stay up till three in the morning if they're having a really great state of flow. Wow. Yeah. That that's tough. I know I'm, I'm the early bird and it's getting early, yep. <laughs> but I I'm sure wake up early and I'm, I'm ready to go. So that, you know, those are the different things that, yeah. That and you're we, a traveler. So you're able to adapt quickly, I think. Yeah. No, with your international too. travel. But, yeah. But I do think it's important to recognize when we are productive and then give ourselves grace for the periods that we are not feeling productive and recognize our own, as you say, state of flow. Um, yes, that's, yes, that's yeah. But Trish, I'd love to just share, ask you to share this journey that you've been on. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that you had a very interesting career ahead of time with no association in a sense to where you're at now. But yep. when did you first decide that you wanted to be a coach and to where you are now? I know that's been a journey, mm -hmm. but I'm sure there've been some challenges and some observations. But what made you decide that? Yeah, coaching was drawing you um, away from your career that you had. That's a question I can answer pretty simply. Um, and I and I thank you for that because it's nice to remember that like a lot of creative ideas, it came out of necessity. When I was in sales um, with multimedia and traveled, traveled about 30 is that possible? Yeah, I traveled every other week in the US with sales training. And I suddenly realized a real trend with sales folks. This was back, go oh gosh, 10 years ago. Every sales rep I got into a car with, because we would go on sales training calls with businesses, and um, they were nine times out of 10 stressed out, nine times out of 10 sharing something going on in their lives that was really hectic. And I found myself being, you know, a makeshift therapist, which I am certainly not. And I'm sure that's a whole nother episode, which is the difference between coaching and therapy. Um, at any rate, I came upon a life coach and she told me what she did for a living. And this was back in 2002, never heard of it before. Started working with her and really realized the power. And of course, most people know now coaching has taken on all different sorts of mm -hmm. specificities and niches. Um, but my focus has remained, and that's what led me into coaching, um, became certified with the Mitch Matthews program, which I highly recommend. Mitch Matthews is just an incredible mentor and leader, really follow his practices still today. Um, but at any rate, you and I have talked about this both on and off camera and recording. You know, I followed the wave of need and necessity, but I, I did become a professional certified coach about eight years ago, remained in sales for quite a while because it provided a great income. But then I really went fully into coaching just before the pandemic which brought no income at all. But now, as most of us know, the state of, of affairs in our world, many people are turning not only to therapy, but also to support, encouragement, wellness. What can I do to make my life more centered? What can I do to hold myself accountable? And so I've continued to do learning. I do continue to work through a lot of the Carol Dweck methodology where she follows the growth mindset versus the fixed mindset. And I really loved how you um, mentioned, I still definitely glad to see that my bio is updated properly because I hadn't looked at it in a while. But Carol, you're, you're exactly right. 360 coaching, one of my clients said, hey, you're providing 360 coaching. And I thought, you know what? That's what I'm calling it then. So it's really a full circle. We look at a person's various slices in their life, which we call the life pie. And then, you know, we say, which one do you want to work on right now? I have one client who's working on personal growth, another who wants to really take a fresh look at their budget. Um, I am not an expert 
in any of those areas, but what I can do and what you're doing too, Carol, is asking the right questions, learning right. how to lead them down that path in a way that they dictate, you know, with coaching. Yeah, it's that, client that support takes the lead. person. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. those listening skills that I know that you and I have worked hard on in this last year or two. And, yep. you know, what value you get from that, because you are, you're listening to your clients and as you said, it has, it's become a time where we're looking for somebody to support us on this journey as opposed to hiding and questioning 100%. and allowing this judge to come at us and, and, you know, debilitate us and not let us step forward. But thank I you know, for saying listening too, by the way, because mm, listening is such a challenge for me and I am finding that I'm becoming a much better coach through that. So thank you for mentioning yes, listening yeah. is key. Yes, to our listeners. I think we're all on that, that learning path of how to improve that and it, it brings value. But I know that you mentioned, and part of that is, you know, you started this coaching just before the pandemic, but that you also shared with me that it's a fascinating and an uncertain business being an accountability coach. And I've traveled that road with you. I, you know, I've, we've, we've shared stories about that, but could you share a bit more with our audience just to encourage them that they certainly... Um, it's an uncertain business, but you've stayed, you've stuck it in. Yes, and things definitely. Have changed. And it's interesting because I see it as two halves of the same whole. On the one hand, we're all human. We're all seeking. For instance, I have my own coach. Um, you have your mentors. I truly believe in Carol. You were the first to really remind me of this is the idea that as we lift others up, someone's lifting us up. Right. And so I, I mentioned to my own coach that it takes a village to raise me and that she's the mayor of my village. <laughs> That's what I told her in my Christmas card. But you're so correct. That. You know, business advice for coaches, I'm constantly seeking that. I'm seeing what other coaches are doing, what they have to offer. But honestly, what I'm realizing that's kind of an aha moment for me, I am learning the most and being given the most of what my clients need by listening to them. Mm. They're telling me what they need. I'm going and doing the research in between coming back with the resources. Yes, I'm centered on accountability, but ironically, and I shared this a few minutes ago, Carol, uh, with you, ironically, the people that are telling me I need to be tougher on them. I have a British client who says you need to turn the screws more on accountability. That's when I actually question them and say, you don't have to always be really hard on yourself to succeed because part of coaching, I think is not, not just pushing someone and encouraging them, but reminding them to take good care of themselves and reminding them, Hey, are you being good to yourself? I realize mm. you're succeeding a lot, but let's go back to that life pie. You're making that income you wanted to make, but how's your family life? How's your right, health? Right. And I love being able to ask those questions whilst not being a therapist. Yes. When they do share, I, I think this is important to share with listeners. When they do share, you know, hey, I'm struggling um, emotionally. I'm having family issues. First question I ask is, do you have a therapist? You know, where are you getting that support? Because right. that is not that is not my wheelhouse. Right. So and that's, that's a, a very distinct mm. difference there. Right. Is that you need somewhere to talk about that, but bringing those parts of the pie in are so important because it's not just about success and making mm -hmm. money and we need to slow down and be present um, in now. So even, you know, for your client is saying, you know, ramp up the accountability, um, you want him to enjoy his life. So while he's right. And I remind them success. what we said in the first meeting, you're exactly right. That very first piece we look at that you're familiar with Carol is the life pie. And it's, it's, it's a pretty standard tool that I can't imagine a coach isn't using at least once where it's, it's the simplest way, no matter what kind of a client you have. And I do, as I mentioned, I work with a couple of clients from different countries. So their culture is um, different. And so it's a great way to kind of, um, you know, simplify that process in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And so to your point, while they go down a rabbit hole in one area, I can remind them, Hey, remember, this was what you created. This is what you told me you wanted. Do you still want right, that? Right. So coaching provides that tremendous value as well is I want to hold you accountable, but to the things you, 
you really want to be held accountable. That you requested, to. right, mm, at exactly. the beginning. Exactly. So I know that you mentioned that there's some discoveries, and we're kind of talking about that at the moment, that you're finding while you are working with your clients who are seeking accountability help. Mm -hmm. Would you say there's a common thread or is each one so individual in where they're needing support for the accountability? Love that. That is a straightforward question. Uh, common thread right now, it, it absolutely, ironically, the common thread is something, the pandemic has equalized everything. We all are, you know, living very different lives, but the common thread I'm seeing with the clients I'm working with right now, regardless of their goals, regardless of their station in life, regardless of their financial situation is anxiety. You know, constantly when, my first question during the, and that's been the case for about a year now. So maybe that's something that that we will always be watching is mm -hmm. how do we feel today? So my first question is, how do you feel today? And they'll say, I'm dealing with this. I'm dealing with that. It's usually something personal, not, not real, you know, professionally coaching related. So we absolutely go there. Don't we, Carol? And so how are you feeling? And then when I, when I get a handle on that, it's, it's typically tools. Are you using those resources or questions as a coach? We ask good questions if we're doing our job. What tools are you using to manage that anxiety? You know, well, I haven't been to the gym. Okay, circle back around to uh, the um, accountability. And it would be, great, let's set a goal. Or I'm not doing the walking I usually do. Or I really ate horribly during the holidays, lots of sugar. Great, how can we get you back on track? And guess what happens when I hang up? I check myself. So as I said <laughs> earlier, I am really doing better as a human being because of my clients. They're holding so, me accountable. Love I, that. It's, yeah. So that's, yeah, that's okay. Anxiety. And then number two common thread would be um, insecurity. I, the, the thing I seem to do repeatedly, and I love it, it makes me feel purposeful, worthwhile, reminding these beautiful individuals who they are, mm -hmm. these incredibly intelligent individuals who they are. And um, they're so grateful for something as simple as you told me, these are the three things you love about yourself. And what? they say, thank you for reminding me. And so it's not simple, but it's right. powerful. It's, uh, and it's, it's important. We mentioned when you and I were chatting before this call that the word accountability sometimes can scare people. Yeah. But that there, there definitely is. I mean, you know, we can hold ourselves accountable. We can journey with somebody else, but there, there needs to be a form of accountability. Would you not agree in our lives? Absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, truly, I mean it. These clients are holding me accountable. I yeah. thought... What can I do this year? I'm overwhelmed. I'm feeling all the same things they're feeling. It's fairly simple to say, hey, I'm right there with you. And every right. now and then I say, can I pay you today to listen to me? <laughs> I'm halfway joking, but they do but, listen to me too. So oh. um, it's allowing me to grow, Carol. It's allowing it's, me to grow. And I'm holding myself accountable to um, continue to learn, continue to one of my clients has um, is doing something politically related, so I'm learning about that. One of my clients is from a remote um, area of Africa. I'm learning about that area. It's it's fascinating. It's a journey unto itself. Uh, and it's just it's community. It just highlights that word community. It does. You, it uh, does. Community all around the globe. I know that on your website, you've got this wonderful quote, and I just wanted to share it with our listeners. You're never too old to set another goal or to dream a new dream, C.S. Lewis. And I just think that that, as we are here now in January 2023, is to encourage our listeners to, yeah, go and set that goal and, and dream another dream. So Trish, I'd love to just ask you, what advice would you give somebody who is just getting started in coaching? Mm -hmm. Is there something that you've kind of, when you reflect back and the choices that you made, something 
you know, fairly simple. And I think it's because we refer that a lot of people are stepping into coaching mm -hmm. and it's needed because I also find that there's not even enough therapists to go around. That's <laughs> exactly right. I'm glad. Take on new clients. Yeah. I'm so glad you brought you that say? up. Okay. I'm going to go boring and practical. Absolutely. Don't quit your J job. As you, as you venture into something new, unless you have savings or, you know, financial stability for at least six months to pay your real bills. So get real and go to money first. I wish I'm pretty good at that. I wish I would have done it even better. Well, I tapped into some savings. Own advice. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right, but it's okay right. now it's working. I just had to really do some yeah. tap dancing, which yeah. is extremely stressful as a coach. Those coaches out there know this. Um, and those who are looking into being a coach, um, really do your homework on programs. It's not necessary in my humble opinion to pay $10,000 and go to a hotel. And even honestly, there will be people who don't agree with this, but I, I truly don't know that you have to be, um, internationally certified with one of the top organizations. I think that the work you do, the referrals you get from clients, the testimonials, Mitch Matthews has one of the best programs and some of the most successful coaches making a very good income and doing very important work. Well, that's so very valuable. I would, so. I would say that as, as, as starting advice. And then number two, Honestly, Carol, and I know you do this too, have a coach of your own. I do not believe in doing the work without following the path. Absolutely. You know, always do the learning. Yep. Absolutely. I mean, here we are wanting other people to trust in us, to advise and guide them. We need the same thing. So it, yep. it is, it's, a, you know, it's one of the things that I promote is you need a community to support you on this journey. Um, and Definitely. we also let those self-talking negatives jump into our heads. So it helps to have somebody else from the outside look. Definitely. In. And if I could offer one more thing, thanks. Thanks. This is mm. such a great question. And I put my hat on to share with other coaches out there. There is a great need for you. If you're looking into doing it, definitely, like I said, you know, have some savings, have a plan because it is going to require money to get going. It's not going to require lots and lots of marketing. Um, Absolutely, Carol. I know you're specializing in, in social media accountability. That's really important. But um, just as you said, the therapist, my therapist slash coach, she, she's turning people away every day. So we are at a time right now in society where people are looking for coaches. So stay in there, but get proper training and just have the money to pay your bills. So mm -hmm. otherwise, though, there is a lot of opportunity out there and we really need more coaches. And just to support what you're sharing, Trish, you, know, you can do this day job. If you look at managing your time well, you can decide you know, what Good days one. of the week, when and who and how, so that you don't get overwhelmed. Good and you one. can can run with, with both the day job and getting your feet wet in the coaching as you decide what direction that's going to take you. So Trish, this has been wonderful. What ex upcoming project are you excited about? What's next for Trish as we move here into 2023? Well... I, you know, and maybe some of the listeners do, I'm, I'm still in the midst of completing my log home. It's the weather has put us on a complete hold for quite some time, but it is coming along. So that's part, when you talk about time blocking and making time for things, that is still a big part of my life pie, if you will. Um, and then honestly, just continuing to learn, making time sitting myself down when I don't want to, just like my clients, just like everyone else sitting down to have blocked learning time because I just, I really, I need to, and I want to continue to be ahead of the game when it comes to tools, resources, what are people needing right now? And as I said a minute ago, so many people are reaching out for, for therapists and many of them need therapy, but some of them could do very well with simply coaching for motivation, for, for self-confidence, for coordinating their their life plan absolutely i 100 percent agree with you on that one so to our listeners thank you for listening to this episode if you have felt inspired by our conversation today i would love for you to share it wherever you like to share your content and if you'd like to find other resources tips and tools for your solopreneur journey 
do stop by my resources page at carolclegg.com. And before we let Trish leave us, I want to let you know where you can find her. So her website, Trish, am I correct? It's healthylifemindset.com. Right. Thank you, Carol. Yep, that's correct. Absolutely. So this will be in the show notes that you'll be able to click on the link and pop on over to Trisha's website and then connect with her on social. You'll certainly find her on LinkedIn and Instagram. And those both will be in the show notes. And Trish, is there an option for somebody on your website to book a, an intro call or a discovery there call? Is, with there is. Boy, you got me there. There's there usually is. I'm going to double check. There should be a click here to schedule a visit. Lovely, so, and but thank I, you so much, Carol. Thank you so much. Of course. But I know your email is there so they can reach out yep. to you with an email it is. Um, or with a phone call. So yep. listeners, I encourage you this week to explore your own way of connecting, inspiring and creating that will bring joy into your world. Until the next time. Bye bye. I almost, oopsie.